Okay, so in the last lesson, you saw us making a proof, which is a set of statements and the reasons why you can make those statements, okay? So a theorem, like we have here, is some kind of conjecture or statement that you can actually prove is true based on uh, given information, definitions, properties, postulates, and any pre, uh, previously proven theorems. So once you prove a theorem, you can now use it um, later to be able to prove new things. And remember this course, we started out just having point, line, and plane, and we used those three ideas to begin to uh, build other ideas. And then once we had those, we could go from there and use them. Okay, so the vertical angles theorem, as you know, says that vertical angles are congruent. Angle one is congruent to angle three, and angle two is congruent to angle four. We've already discussed this. Now, the basic idea here, it says when you're writing a geometric proof, um, it might help you if you write it into a conditional statement with a hypothesis and conclusion. So you could write this as, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent, okay? Um, so the hypothesis is the given statement, and the conclusion is what you want to prove. So uh, given that two angles are vertical, we want to be able to prove that they're congruent, and that's what we're about to do. Check it out. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to prove that angle one is congruent to angle three, and they're giving us some information. They're telling us that angle one and angle three are vertical angles, okay? So that becomes the first thing that we have that we say, okay, well, we know that angle one and angle three are vertical angles. How do we know that? Because that was given to us, and that is the first thing that we restate. Now, from there, what can we do? Well, we're going to make another statement that we're going to help use to build the case. Now, uh, notice this. Um, we've got this idea that we know to be true. We, are, we have this idea of a linear pair, okay, and they sum to 180, right? And this is what the idea is here. They're telling us, by the way, uh, that angle one and angle two are supplementary, and angle two and angle three are supplementary, meaning that they sum to 180, which we'll get to in a second. Okay, angles that form a linear pair are supplementary, and we can see that they form a linear pair. Okay, so we're saying that they're supplementary. What does that mean then? Well, that means that we can say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. We can also then say that the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180, and that is the definition of supplementary angles, right? Okay. So you could write definition of supplementary angles or the way they say it, the sum of the measures of supplementary angles is 180. Once you know that, then since, see how they're both equal to 180? Well, then we know that this and this are equal to each other. That is the transitive property, remember? Where if two things are equal to something else, we know they're equal to each other. So we can say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. Okay, why is it the transitive property? because they're both equal to 180, and when two things are equal to 180, they're equal to each other, okay? And now, by subtracting the measure of angle two from both sides, we can get come up with the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. And what does that look like? Subtraction property of equality. What did we subtract there? What was there in red? That the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle two, so we subtract the measure of angle two from both sides, okay? And if the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three, then angle one is congruent to angle three because that's what congruent angles are, okay? Angles with the same measure, measure are congruent, okay? So that then becomes the proof of how do we know that uh, angle one and angle three are congruent if they're vertical. So that's kind of proving the vertical angles theorem right there, okay? So we've established that the vertical angles theorem is true. We were given it, and since we were given the vertical angles theorem, you can just use that as we have the vertical angles theorem um, in the future, okay? when you Once you have a theorem, you can just say vertical angles theorem um, to establish that these two angles are congruent. Um, even though we proved it just now, we we're just showing you that it was true, okay? But that is true that 
vertical angles are congruent. So what can we do now? Well, what is the value of x? Let's take a look at what they're doing here, okay? They're saying, okay, the two labeled angles are vertical angles, so set them equal to each other. 2x plus 21 is equal to 4x. Now, solve for x by subtracting 2x from each side. Subtracting 2x gives you 2x on this side and gives you just 21 on this side, and then dividing by 2, okay? And then it says grid the answer because they give it to you as like kind of a multiple choice or, uh, you know, like SAT type problem. Don't worry about that. The fact is, is that 21 divided by 2 is 10.5, and that's what the answer is, okay? Um, now, here, how would you get started on something like that? You're going to look for the relationship in the diagram that allows you to write an equation. And since we know that these are vertical angles, we can say this equals this. Because once you know the relationship to them and that they're equal, that's when you can solve it out. Okay? So here's your got a problem. Attack this one and come up with your answer and then check your answer. Good luck. So now that we know the vertical angles theorem, we're going to be able to use it. And this is what it looks like to use it. We have right here a given piece of information that angle one is congruent to angle four. And if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to do this. They have to tell us something to get us started. That's what's given. Okay. And what we're trying to prove is that angle two is congruent to angle three. Now, this is neat. Check it out. We've got that given information that they gave us. That's the first line. And by the way, the way that you do this is you say one, you make a statement. And over here, one means the matching thing that proves that this statement is true. Okay, so we're gonna go to two. Angle two is congruent to angle, sorry, angle four is congruent to angle two. And of course, what are they? They are vertical angles. So the vertical angles, you could write vertical angles theorem, or you could just say vertical angles are congruent. Totally fine. But what else do we know? Okay. Well, if we know that both, notice that angle one is congruent to angle four and angle two is congruent to angle four. Since they're both congruent to angle four, they're congruent to each other through the transitive property of congruence. Okay, you've got a new statement that wasn't given to you, but you can make knowing your rules. Angle one is congruent to angle two. Sweet, okay, what else do we know? Angle one is congruent to angle three also because they're vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent. Guess what? They're both congruent to angle one right here. Okay, so then therefore angle two is congruent to angle three through the transitive property of congruence. Yeah. And that was what we were trying to prove. Sweet. Okay. So that's, that's that. Let's get that out of there. And let's give you a got it problem, okay? Um, now, oops. Okay. Use the vertical angles theorem to prove, given in this diagram that angle one is congruent to angle two, prove that all th four of these angles are congruent to each other, okay? Give it a try, write down the rules, and see if you got it. Um, by the way, this is a good one. If you didn't get it and you don't know why it works, once you see it, um, and when you do see it, even if you didn't get it, read through it and see if it all makes sense to you step by step. And you say, oh, yeah, OK, I see how they did that. I see why that's true. If you don't, good one to bring to me for uh, enrichment. Anyway, try it. All right, so this is important to talk about. There are things. Well, the proof, the last proof in problem two is a two column proof. The two columns are all the statements and then all the reasons why you can make those statements. Two columns. Columns go up and like down, right? Like that. Now, but there are many ways to display a proof and there's also a thing called a paragraph proof. I'm going to tell you right now that this is just another way of writing the same information in a two column proof. And we're going to stick with two column proofs because they're nice and neat and clear. But I will show you this and then you can see it. Okay. Below is the proof from problem two in paragraph form. Let's see what how they write it, okay? Angle one is congruent to angle four is given, okay? They say that. Now, angle four is congruent to angle two 
because vertical angles are congruent. It's the same thing as saying this in the statement column and this in the reason column. Yep. Now, this is where you've got to keep track of this. They're giving you the reason why they're making the statement first, then the statement. Okay. By the transitive property, angle one is congruent to angle two. Okay. Because remember, if we made this statement and then this statement, they're both congruent to angle four. So angle one is congruent to angle two through the transitive property. So you would list this first in the statement column and then in the reasons why you can make that statement column, reason column is transitive property. Okay, then they say angle one is congruent to angle three because vertical angles are congruent. So that would say angle one is congruent to angle three, reason vertical angles are congruent. And then finally, angle two is congruent to angle three, reason transitive property. This is just what we did on the last page, okay? And so there's a thing called the paragraph proof, but we're gonna always write it as a two column proof for simplicity because you'll always be doing the same thing then and it'll be less work for you to learn just one way of doing it. Now, vertical angles theorem is a special case of this theorem, the congruent supplements theorem. It says, if two angles are supplements of the same angle, like angle one and angle two are both supplements of angle three, meaning adding to 180, then the two angles are congruent, okay? And again, if you look back at it, you can see that, uh, remember linear pairs. So if this and this formed a linear pair and this was sitting down here, vertical to this, and was forming a linear pair that way, okay, then they're also gonna be supplements because they're linear pairs. So because vertical angles are both forming a linear pair with some third angle, then if they're both two angles are both supplements of another angle, in this case, angle three, then we know that they're equal amounts. Basically saying, if it takes some amount to add to this to get to 180, then adding this and getting to 180 has to be the same amount. That's the idea. Okay, so this is showing you how to write a paragraph proof. We're gonna be doing it as a two column proof every time, uh, but we'll just see it since it's part of the lesson. Um, okay, they're telling you that angle one and angle three are supplementary and angle two and angle three are supplementary. We're going to try and prove that these are congruent to each other. Okay, now, as, as you can see, well, one thing is like, how do we just, how do we get started on this? Uh, the idea here is that since they're both supplementary to angle three, then we can relate them to each other uh, because of that. Okay, so what does it look like? Well, here's their two call or their paragraph proof. Um, and let's just go through it and see what it would look like. I'm actually gonna underline what it would look like if it was a two column proof by underlining the statement and the reason in pink and then blue. So, okay. Angle one and angle three are supplementary. And why is that given? Okay, so this would be how you would do it as a two column proof. Okay, so what else do we know? The measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 180. How do we know that? Definition of supplementary angles, okay? What's in blue is the reason, and what's in pink is the original statement that you're gonna make that is backed up by that reason. What else can you say? You can say angle two and angle three are supplementary. How do we know that? That was given to us, okay? What else do we know then? That Measure of angle two plus measure of angle three equals 180. And when they say by the same definition, what they mean is definition of supplementary angles, okay? Because that was already given to us that um, up here that angle one and angle three are equal to 180 by that definition and angle two and angle three are equal to 180 by the same definition, okay? By the transitive property now, and again, watch carefully because the transitive property is the reason, and this is the statement. Okay, so those two go together as a, as a reason first, they list it out or as a reason first and then the statement. Now, by subtracting measure of angle three uh, from each side, you can say this statement, what's the statement that you're making? This, what is the reason? Subtraction property of equality. Now, what are you subtracting was the measure of angle three. 
Okay. And then finally, the last line, as always, is going to be the proof of or the thing you're trying to prove, which is um, that angle one is congruent to angle two. And what's the reason? Angles with the same measure are congruent. Okay, so you can take all of those pieces and write it as a two column proof. So uh, here is your got a problem. Write a paragraph proof for the two uh, for the vertical angles theorem, you can write it as a two column proof and you'll see that the answer is written as a two column proof. So write it like that. Okay. See if you can come up with it. And if you can't come up with that, at least look at the two column proof that's provided to you and see if it makes sense that you you can prove the, the vertical angles theorem. Okay. Good luck. Okay, so remember that the congruent supplements theorem it says that um, if two angles sum to 180 and one of those angles and another angle also sums to 180 and the two that add together with that common angle or must be congruent to each other. Okay, so if two angles are complements, not supplements, but complements adding to 90, that's still going to be work the same of the same angle. Okay, or of congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. So if angle one and angle two are complements and angle three and angle two are complements, then angle one must be congruent to angle three. Okay, these two add to 180, these two add to 180, so this must be the same amount in order to both add to this and get 180. Okay. Uh, also, you have all right angles are congruent, angle one and angle two are right angles. Okay. Uh, this is just a just the fact all right angles are congruent to all other right angles that are all 90 degrees. Okay. And if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then each is a right angle. The only way they can add up to 180 if they're the same is if both of them are 90. Yeah. Those are some other rules, uh, theorems that I'll keep in your pocket for when you need to do a proof. Okay. This, le this lesson right here is really where you're going to start to see whether the logic that you know can be applied to your geometry. So go slow, do it right. Um, if some of the earlier stuff in this lesson seemed fairly doable to you and this is a little more challenging, well, maybe this is where you got to put your effort, especially in preparation for the next quiz in the exam. Anyway, try these problems and see how you do. Good luck.